and lowered inside the stator. The rotor was then joined to the turbine water wheel by a 38-inch diameter shaft 63 feet long. Guide and thrust bearings and other parts were added to complete the assembly. After test runs, N8 went on the line December 1st, 1961 to serve the state of Nevada and to complete the Hoover power plant, raising its capacity to one and one-third million kilowatts, keeping it as one of the world's largest hydroelectric installations. As the last sounds of construction faded into history, Hoover Dam had cost $175 million. Less a deferred payment of $25 million allocated to flood control, Hoover Dam's cost is being returned to the federal treasury at 3% interest from the sale of hydroelectric power. Hoover Dam has fulfilled the hopes and expectations of those who envisioned this great reclamation project. Colorado River waters that once destroyed man and his property now serve him. The Colorado pours its waters into Lake Mead, named for Dr. Elwood Mead, reclamation commissioner during construction. Lying calmly behind the dam, these waters await need by downstream users. Water is released through the Hoover power plant turbines in a year-round flow to irrigate over one and one quarter million acres of desert land, serve municipal and industrial needs of the Pacific Southwest, generate hydroelectric energy, and provide various other multipurpose benefits. The clear waters of Lake Mead have opened up a vast new recreational fish and wildlife vacation land for America. Millions beat paths to this one-time wilderness along the Colorado River to picnic, go boating, swim, fish, and enjoy these important outdoor reclamation products. Hoover Dam and its power plant work around the clock to serve water and power needs of the Pacific Southwest. Water from Lake Mead, passing into the intake towers, falls over 500 feet through the penstocks to spin the giant turbine wheels and then discharge to the river. This action is repeated at downstream reclamation dams. Transformers step up Hoover Dam voltage as it comes from the generators. Lines carry this power up over the powerhouse roof to the switchyard. From there, it is transmitted over lines across the desert. The river flows southward. And along the way, man diverts from the controlled stream to sustain his prosperous way of life. 67 miles downstream, Davis Dam re-regulates the Colorado's flow releasing water through its power plant turbines to irrigators in this country and Mexico. Davis Dam generators interconnect with those at Hoover Dam upstream and those at Parker Dam downstream. This energy goes out over transmission lines of the Parker Davis project to farms, homes, and factories. Much of this Colorado River energy pumps the farmers' irrigation and drainage water. Parker Dam 155 miles downstream from Hoover Dam, was built with funds advanced by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. Parker Dam provides a forebay for the district's Colorado River Aqueduct, another one of America's seven modern civil engineering wonders. Electrical energy from Parker and Hoover power plants pumps water along the aqueduct. This waterway delivers municipal and industrial supplies to the Los Angeles and San Diego coastal areas. Parker Dam also controls floods. Below Parker Dam, Headgate Rock Dam diverts water to Colorado River Indian Reservation lands in Arizona. And farther downstream, the Palo Verde Diversion Dam sends water to the Palo Verde Irrigation District, oldest irrigation development on the Colorado River. At Imperial Dam and Desilting Works, 300 miles downstream from Hoover Dam, 
Colorado River water enters river-sized canals to irrigate farmlands in California and Arizona. The All-American Canal System carries part of the Colorado's flow westward to the Yuma, Imperial, and Coachella Valleys. When water reaches its farthest point on this canal system, it has traveled nearly 500 miles after leaving Hoover Dam and has required 10 days to make the trip. The Gila Gravity Main Canal takes water from Imperial Dam south and east to valley and mesa lands of the Gila and Yuma Auxiliary Projects. Mexico's share of Colorado River water to irrigate lands below the border passes Imperial Dam and most of it is diverted at Morelos Dam into the Alamo Canal. The non-surplus food, fiber and forage crops grown on lands nourished by water from Hoover Dam find ready markets throughout the nation. While snow-covered lands lie idle, Winter fruits and vegetables grown in the warm southwest with Colorado River water are shipped to dinner tables across the nation. In return, these irrigated areas buy farm machinery and other products from the manufacturing centers. This exchange of goods between west and east, north and south has helped develop America's free enterprise prosperity. Hoover Dam has pointed the way to the fullest utilization of the Colorado River's resources. Man is adding other mighty reclamation projects to the stairway of dams on the Colorado River. In northern Arizona, Glen Canyon Dam has joined Hoover Dam in conquering and regulating the Colorado. Potential sites in other canyons on the Colorado River await the day when they too will cradle mighty multi-purpose dams. These developments will write new chapters in the story of Hoover Dam, truly a modern civil engineering wonder.